Hello and welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. They donate more blood to ARUP than any other group or organization in the entire state of Utah. We're talking about Jordan School District High School students. Today we visit a blood drive at Copper Hills High organized by HOSA students. HOSA is Health Occupation Students of America, and it is a club that promotes career opportunities in the healthcare industry. Every year, Copper Hills High students manage to donate a record amount of blood. ARUP is the sole provider of blood to the Huntsman Cancer Institute, Shriners Hospital for Children, and U of U hospitals and clinics. They say their life-saving work simply wouldn't happen without help from students. Tell me your name. My name is Ethan Wood. And what is it that makes you want to give blood today? Um, well, it's an easy and quick way to do service, especially in, uh, with COVID-19. Uh, it's really hard to serve in the community. And me personally having O negative blood, I know that that's really needed right now. And so it's a really good way to give back to my community. Giving O negative is a big positive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're a rare breed. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you do it for the free Gatorade partially? Uh, the treats are a really nice bonus. Yeah. <laughs> have you given blood before? I have. I have given blood, I think, three times before here. <laughs> All part of the Copper Hills blood drive. Yeah. Okay, so the needle is in. You're relaxed. How are you feeling? Feeling great. <laughs> Not much really else to say. It's just... You feel, it's like a feeling of calmness, kind of, I guess, because, like, there's all the anxiety of getting the needle in, but once it's actually in, I generally feel just really calm and relaxed. <laughs> there are a lot of things about that in life. The anticipation is the worst. When you're sitting there giving blood, do you think about the fact that you're saving a life, you're providing health to someone who can't get it any other way? Definitely something that I think about. I get calls from ARUP when they confirm that like my blood has been used and that's something that I know I've done research about it and I know that O negative is one of the blood types that they use when they don't know an infant's blood type and the infant needs to be saved. So that's something that's generally what I think about when donating blood. That's awesome. Yep. Do, you, do you get to use this as an excuse for turning something in late or well, uh, retaking I, a test perhaps? I get to use it for service hours for uh, the National Honor Society Club, and I also get to miss class time, so that's great. <laughs> well, I know the reason you're doing it is to help people. It's nice to get a little icing on that cake, though. Yeah. What year in school are you? I'm a senior. And what do you want to do? Um, I want to go into film production, actually. <laughs> that's exciting. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite movies? Um, I really love mystery movies, so like Clue, the classic. Ah, yeah. very good. Nice. Well, good luck with your career aspirations. Oh, thank and you. And thanks for being an inspiration donating blood today. Oh, thank you. So you heard of Well, I'm one of the host of council members, and yeah, I'm just making sure everybody's six feet apart. And what's your name? Fifty Mel Sadie. And uh, you do get to give out the snacks. Well, yeah, kind of. And well, everybody just gets to pick. Everyone gets to pick. Yeah. So you're not here to give them out, you're here more to protect them from people who want to uh, overindulge. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most popular? This one. The, uh, foot, uh, the foot roll. Oh, the fruit by the foot. Mm -hmm. Yes, excellent choice. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think the cheese is. How long have you been involved in HOSA? Uh, this is going to be my second year, but this year I'm part of the council members. So. What does the blood drive mean to you as a member of HOSA? I feel like it's a sign of hope. It like really brings our school together because one of our our schools is one of the most top. Like they they depend on us a lot, and our schools is one of the biggest donors. So it's really nice to bring everyone together and give more. You know, we're helping everybody out. Tell me your name. Um, my name is Isla Nehich. Isla, mm -hmm. tell me about HOSA. For those who aren't familiar with the organization, what do you do? Well, HOSA is, well, it stands for um, Health Occupational Students of America, and it's basically just a club for anyone that is interested in the medical field, and it's like, it's a really great club. It's very welcoming, very, the advisors and the students, members, they're all very, very kind and respectful. We do lots of service projects, um, like last year we did rice bags for children at the hospital um, for like the cancer patients. This year we're planning on doing like um, fleece blankets for them too. 
We also do a lot of medical related stuff. We might even have like um like uh, a surgery, like we're gonna watch like a surgery and like a virtual surgery happen this year. What is Hosa's involvement in the blind drive? Hosa's involvement, um well, we have our HOSA members and our advisors. We try to get as many people as we can to sign up for the blood drive. So we promote it for about two weeks before the blood drive happens. Today, we are just helping out by standing here, making sure everyone gets checked in, and then we have someone inside making sure everyone is social distancing. Yeah. What percentage of those who sign up show up? Last year, I know we had about 150 people sign up, and we usually have like about a hundred, a hundred and twenty people show up. That's a really <laughs> good, that's a really good show. Yeah. That's really good. Thanks for the work you're doing. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks Thank for you. talking with us. Thanks. Thank you so much. Stay with us to hear more about students who are helping to save lives by donating blood. <laughs> Hello, I'm Stacey Worthen, Secondary Counseling Specialist for Jordan School District. Do you know all the ways Jordan School District counselors can help you and your students? School counselors play such an important role in our schools. They provide parents with resources to help guide their children in academics. They provide support with the mental and social well-being of students in our schools. And if you are in the process of preparing a student for college or just beginning the conversation of higher education, now is the perfect time to reach out to your child's counselor. We can assist with college applications and college readiness. I encourage parents and guardians to schedule an appointment and get to know your student's counselor. Together, counselors and parents can help develop plans and strategies for students to succeed long after they leave Jordan School District. Reach out. We're always here to help. You can find us and learn more at counseling.jordandistrict.org. We're here with Rob from ARUP at the Copper Hills High School Blood Drive. This is not the first blood drive Copper Hills High School has done. No, Copper Hills is actually the uh, largest blood drive we hold all year. Uh, we hold four individual drives with Copper Hills throughout the school year, collect more units here than we do from any of our, our other sponsors. Any sponsor, now does that mean any other high school sponsor any or school, any sponsor? Any other church, any other university, any other business. Copper Hills and their four drives uh, collects more blood force than any of the other sponsors. Why do you think that is? What is it about Copper Hills? You know, I haven't been able to put a finger on it. The teachers are always enthusiastic, and I think that enthusiasm spills over into the students. And every time I come here, there's just been a, there's just a great outpouring of support. The students are willing to put the effort into it, willing to make sure that the blood drives are successful. I think it's a great tradition and uh, it sounds like it's built momentum over the years that uh, makes us number one. I like to hear that. Yeah. It, it's a great tradition. Uh, it's actually kind of uh, a great tradition in Jordan uh, District. Uh, some of the biggest high schools in the, in the state here that we're holding blood drives with, uh, we collect nearly a thousand units of blood from all of the schools combined. Copper Hills kind of leads the way, but all the other schools are, are running right close behind. Are there some groups that have decided not to sponsor a blood drive this year because of the pandemic? Yes, since uh, around March 12th, when most of the drives started canceling, uh, the majority of the drives that canceled right up front were uh, business drives, They're sending their employees home, working from home, uh, and the drives that are still continuing to cancel on a regular basis are business drives. Uh, we're seeing uh, through the summer with the since the pandemic came into full effect. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, church-sponsored blood drives, and that's been kind of our main support through the summer. But now that the schools are back in, we're seeing the schools wanting to put in, uh, get, keep the drives going and put in the effort to help us be here. The students are so willing to support the blood drives. Uh, we've just been really looking forward and, and hoping that the, the schools stay open and to, uh, we can be here to hold these drives. Because they're just so well supported and so grateful for the efforts of the students and their advisors. So without students, you'd be in trouble? We would. We'd, uh, we'd still be struggling along. Uh, we were averaging around uh, 20 blood drives a month since April. Uh, we should be upwards of 45 to 50. Uh, we were averaging about 17 units of blood every single blood drive, which is less than half of what we would normally average. So now that we're back into the schools, we're hoping to see that average go up. We definitely have more drives on the calendar. We're just hoping and praying that the, uh, that the units are coming in. 
What are some of the precautions being taken to make sure that blood drives are safe uh, in the midst of a pandemic? As many as the CDC has put out that we can actually in instigate or implement in one of our blood drives, we're doing it. Uh, our staff, when they show up to our facility to get ready to go to a blood drive, puts on a mask. Uh, then they wear that mask through the entire day uh, in transit to the drive, mask while they're at the blood drive unless they're finished having their lunch or taking a drink, but they stay masked. And then they stay masked in transit back to our facility as they check out and do the end of the day work and then they don't take their mask off again until they leave. Uh, we are doing regular uh, checks for their temperatures to make sure that they're staying healthy, uh, asking them to self-quarantine if they have any sort of uh, illness symptom. Uh, we do, we're, we're testing uh, some of the staff on a, on a weekly basis to make sure that everybody's safe. Uh, when we come to a facility uh, for a blood drive, we're measuring out uh, spacing between waiting areas and actual uh, working stations to make sure that we've got the physical distancing. Where does the blood go? Where does the blood go? Wow. Uh, we're the sole provider of, of blood to Huntsman Cancer Hospital, uh, the University Hospital and its clinics, and the Shriners Hospital for Children, and a couple other facilities around the Salt Lake Valley. And what's the need level right now? Uh, boy, I, let's put it this way. The need's always increasing. Uh, we need blood every single day. Hard to say exactly how much we're going to need every day. Each day is a little bit different. Uh, earlier in the year, we had, uh, earlier in September, we had 25 patients come into the hospital. Uh, one of those patients used 179 products on their own. Uh, that is two of Copper Hills' blood drives to one patient. Uh, but then yesterday, we had 36 patients come in and 46 products were used. So it just kind of depends on the day. But the best way to put it is, there's a constant need on a daily basis, and that need doesn't diminish. It's just always there. How long does blood stay good for? How long can it be used after it's been donated? Uh, from a whole blood unit, we'll take generally two, two products. That is red blood cells and plasma. Red blood cells last for about 35 days. Plasma can be frozen because it's mostly water and will last for about a year. Uh, Usually within that 35 days shelf life, those red blood cells are used. So based on the need you described, it would be pretty rare for anything to expire or get even close. Very rare. This time of year and with the conditions we're in, very, very rare. What are the qualifications to donate blood? Who's eligible and who isn't? Um, basically, we're looking for donors that are healthy and well. Uh, no symptoms of any illness, not just COVID-19, but just any illness. Uh, that's the first check for any of our blood donors. Are you feeling healthy and well today? Uh, high school is a little bit different because we have to make sure that the donors have uh, the body mass so they have enough blood in their system to be able to donate. But in general, donors need to be 110 pounds, uh, 16, 17, 18 year olds. So 16 is the youngest we'll take. They need to have parental consent. Uh, most people are eligible to donate blood, we'll put it that way. Uh, just a lot of them don't realize that they can do it. What would someone need to do if they wanted to participate and give blood? Uh, best way for them to, uh, our, our, our website, utahblood.org, uh, they can reach out to us through that way. They can, they can find a blood drive there, or they can at least get in touch with us and we can help them find uh, the closest drive to them. Uh, we've got drives all over the state every single month, so well, all over northern Utah, Utah County up into Cache County. They just need to get in touch with us and we can help them find the drive that's closest to them. So what would you say to students who have been participating and been supporting the blood drives, not just this year, but over the years? First of all, thank you so much. Uh, you've been a great contributor to the lives of so many. It would be awesome to be able to take you to the hospital and introduce you to these people to their families who you've helped support and, and save lives, but we don't, we don't get to do that. All I can tell you is thank you, and there are so many out there, my brother included, that, that wouldn't be alive today without your efforts. How do the HOSA students, the Health Occupation Students of America, get involved in helping set these up? What's their role? Uh, their role is, is from beginning to end. Uh, I, I contact the advisor. The advisor helps me get blood drives on the schedule. And then I meet with the advisor and the students uh, three to four weeks outside of a blood drive to talk to them about uh, how the drive needs to be set up, uh, what needs to be in place for each one of the donors. Uh, 
make sure that they understand the process that, it, that needs to be gone through so that all the donors that are coming to the drive are as, as prepared as possible. They're here at the drives um, helping check in students, making sure that they're coming with everything that they need to be prepared to donate. Uh, they're here in, in the canteen watching the donors after they've donated to make sure that they're feeling well. But the most important uh, job that they play is making sure that the donors are getting signed up. They're recruiting for us. They're our mouthpiece when we can't be. They're the ones that are talking the blood drives up, encouraging the people to donate, to sign up to donate, and encouraging the people to be here. So without them, uh, we just wouldn't be able to hold these drives. It's the best kind of peer pressure. Absolutely it is. Thank you, Rob. Hey, Great thank job. You so much. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate you. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Supercast. Remember, education is the most important thing you will do today. We'll see you out there.